Hello and welcome, we're at the track covering the sport of kings. Coming up, all eyes that came out of spark on the classic contender Mahogany tuning up for the Jamaica St. Leisure next month in TNT. The brilliant Philip Bella Riva puts her unbeaten tag on the line. A massive stakes win for the Barbadian jockey Patrick Husbands headlines the Caribbean stories in Canada. And uh, there's an emotional win for the top Barbadian trainer, Sir Michael Stout in England. Came out of spark in Jamaica is where we start. Sundays feature the overnight allowance eighth race and check out the handsome chestnut gelding Mahogany, the four horse with a rider change. Omar Walker now up in place of Dane Dawkins, who was heavily criticized in his 2000 Guinness defeat last month to Wow Wow. There's the field, Wow Wow's older half brother Crimson in the one box at six to one, nine to two the odds on the two horse, Summer Sun. Number four, Mahogany, the hot two to five favorite, also popular at the betting windows. Number eight, Sentient, the second favorite at two to one. Let's get that race call now from Brian Rickman. Down the back stretch they go. They leave the six and make their way toward the five. Mahogany now joins Jamai Raja. They battle briefly and Mahogany has a slim lead over Jamai Raja. Princess Annie is chasing from third. Rohan Kabir between horses. Sentient kept off those splits in the black silks. There goes Coco Chanel moving narrowly in front of Crimson. And at the back remains Summer Sun, but not too far away to land a blow in the lane as the leaders arrive at the half mile. Into that turn goes Mahogany, slipping away now by two lengths. Jamai Raja continues to chase, being niggled along as they leave the 716. Sentient now asked to close up with Rohan Kabir. Summer Sun has overtaken horses. Crimson in between them. Coco Chanel out three wide and Princess Annie hugging the rail. Into the lane, here is Mahogany, blasting away from them, but still under an easy ride. At the top of it, a quarter of a mile to run, and Mahogany stretches that lead. Omar Walker having a look behind, a crack on the shoulder. 316th to run, and Mahogany looks to blitz them. Inside the final furlong, it is all Mahogany. The rest are all weak in behind as Mahogany comes, roaring away inside the final 16th. A fine performance from a classy racehorse. Mahogany and Omar Walker score by maybe 10. An awesome win for Mahogany in a massive rebound from his Guinness defeat when it was felt Jockey Dawkins went too fast early with some blistering splits. With Walker now, the gelding not much slower in some of those splits, 45-4 at the half mile and 1-10 even for six furlongs. The victory margin 10 and a half lengths, the finishing time after a striking mile split of 136 and 4 fifths. 1 minute 43 seconds even, a mere 4 fifths of a second outside the track record for 8.5 furlongs ahead of the September 26th cent leisure. Trainer Ian Prasad quite satisfied overall with Mahogany's performance and acceleration down the home stretch, but appears to think jockey Omar Walker may still have gone too fast early at 45-4 for the first half mile. We wanted a couple of changes. Uh, we got it for the first furlong and a half. We didn't get it after that. So I was just discussing with him. We still have a little work to do. I think we're back to the drawing board. Passat's other big classic horse, Double Crown, who was third in the Colts and Gelding's Guinness, was in Saturday's restricted stakes, seventh race over a mile. He was the four to five favorite and lying fourth here within striking distance of the leaders under Shane Ellis. And Eroy gets that lead. It's held over Nipster a length and a half. Green Gold Rush waited for a late kick as they leave the three. Double Crown needs to find five or more lengths. In behind them, a rum with me. Best daughter ever is under the pump as they go slipping past the 5-16th. The back markers are smooth criminal and Colbert, but Eroy turns for home with that lead. Nipster now asked to rally on the outside. Green Gold Rush brought with a run over against the rail. Double Crown has work to do, but they've got to catch this fleet-footed Eroy, and he continues to roll on. Nipster now beginning to nibble at the lead. Green Gold rushes on the rail and double crowd in behind them can't win from there and Nipster has rallied to rejoin Eroy it's Nipster and Eroy in a driving finish Nipster and Eroy looks to have done it it's close double crown beaten only a half length but ends up fourth as a US bred Eroy from Hall of Famer Richard Azan's barn topples a bunch of classic horses and does it as a four to one bet by a neck over Nipster at 92 odds with green gold rush at two to one third in a tight four-way finish Eroy benefits from six-time champion Omar Walker's skillful ride for the Colts' second career win for an owners group that includes Randy McLean. I am extremely pleased with the result today. Small horse, but big heart. And the jockey rode him exceptionally well. Today I was pretty confident, but just the weight issue, I would say, damn, they gave me 57 kilo, but I just go out there and use, use my skill and ride him on. Get him on. Once I'm in front and, and, and I feel the horse and I meet me, I'm not going to stop riding until I pass the course. So I just keep him up, keep him up and he, he answer to me. 
To Trinidad and Tobago, Santa Rosa Park now, where the Poon Tip Stud Farm's brilliant filly, Bella Riva, on a five-race winning streak and prepping for the Guineas, tackled a nine-horse field going six furlongs. Nick Cheney picks up the commentary down the back stretch. A half mile to go, the pace is a good one here, and Integrity shows the way. Integrity is the leader to Blue Navigator pressing the pace, and Bellariva is up in the outside in third, right there too. Spring Valley is a close up fourth, City of Gold a close up fifth. Two links separates these five, a gap of four links back, and Reggae Rhythm is running in sixth, Cool Cat is in seventh, Galisi next, and they run past the 400 meter mark. Bellariva goes four wide, nonetheless takes the lead here. Bellariva is in front, Spring Valley goes with her. City of Golden behind horses. Reggae Rhythm is running on. Integrity toward the inside. Bella Riva narrowly in front. Here comes Reggae Rhythm. Reggae Rhythm closing up to Bella Riva. Bella Riva holding Reggae Rhythm coming on the outside. Bella Riva desperate. Reggae Rhythm is there. Bella Riva. Bella Riva. Bella Riva. A winning tune-up for the scheduled September Guinness for the Triple Crown favorite Bella Riva worked harder than a one to nine favorite was expected to, but the champion jockey brand. Boot Ram Singh gets her home by a neck, clocking 114.47 for trainer John O'Brien's 18th win of the season. Meanwhile, up north at Canada's Woodbine Racetrack, the Barbadian riding ace Patrick Husbands moved within one win of 3,400 career victories in North America with a confident ride aboard Curlin's Voyage in the half a million dollar Woodbine Oaks. Patrick Husbands, after being near the back of the field early, now sixth here in the process of motoring through the field. Curlin's Voyage, pilot episode dropped out. Curlin's Voyage running up the rail pretty well, but infinite patience in front. November Fogs next. Merveo starts to etch into it from the back. And well behind now is Lasting Union and last pilot episode. Infinite patience in front. They come to the turn a quarter of a mile to go in the Woodbine Oaks, but Curlin's Voyage has come right through on the inside and sliced to the front. And Curlin's Voyage has got the lead by a length to a fleet. Catherine, infinite patience, can't go on. And down the outside, Mizenbo. Curlin's Voyage in front. Curlin's Voyage chased by a fleet Catherine. And Curlin's Voyage head on the chest, holding the lead to the wire. A fleet Catherine and Merveilleur behind, but Curlin's Voyage wins the Woodbine Oaks. Make it three stakes wins this season now for husbands. 3,399 in his career at Canada and the USA racetracks. The rich $500,000 Woodbine Oaks to trainer Josie Carroll's Curlin's Voyage by a length and three quarters as a six to five favorite, clocking 150.04 for her fifth lifetime win in nine starts. You gotta ride her hard, you know, and that's the only thing you can't get on the stand, but she's get the job done. A proliferation of added money wins for Caribbean men at other Canadian tracks being dominated by jockeys from Jamaica, Barbados and TNT at Fort Erie in Ontario and further west at Centre Mile and Grand Prairie in Alberta. Barbadian Antonio Whitehall is now up to 17 wins in third position at Centre Mile after landing a stakes double on Friday. The Sonoma Stakes and Princess Margaret, both $40,000 events at the Edmonton Racetrack where Barbadian Rico Walcott is still the clear leader and Jamaican Shamari Muir moved into the top 10 with a triple on Sunday, including the Count Latham Stakes. Trinidadian jockey Richard Mangali won Tuesday's Uena Stakes at Assiniboia Downs and jumped into the top 7 at the Winnipeg Racetrack. Barbadian Whitehall, the runaway colony leader, cracking 6 to wins for the season after a Wednesday night double. TNT's Stanley Chady Jr. and Jamaican Neville Stevenson among the top five. Barbadian jockey Juan Crawford is now the jockey's leader at Fort Erie after a triple on Monday and two wins on Tuesday, including the Molson Stakes with the favorite Auntie Catherine. Five wins in two days, lifting Crawford to 26 victories. Three in front of previous leader Melanie Pinto. Jamaicans Kirk Johnson and Mark Lee Buchanan also in the top five. And Barbadian Chris Husbands now sixth after winning Tuesday's Thomas Moran Stakes with St. Alfred the favorite. And five-time Jamaica champion jockey Trevor Simpson is just two off jockey's leader Blanford Stewart, another Jamaican, at Grand Prairie after landing Sunday's Grand Prairie Derby aboard the 2-5 favorite Triple Power. 14 wins now in the season for Simpson, including three stakes triumphs. Now the Barbados-born top British trainer Sir Michael Stout lost his longtime partner Carl Pritchard Gordon in the past week after a long illness. She was 73 years old. So when leading jockey Oshin Murphy mounted Sir Michael's horse Dream of Dreams in Saturday's £60,000 Hungerford Stakes at Newbury, there was a lot of emotion and heavy betting too because he was the favourite going into the seven furlong run. And as a six-year-old gelding, the two horse and Murphy in the blue and yellow silks moved forward to take control. The result was inevitable. 
furlong and a half to go and dream of dreams and breathtaking look the two that raced over on the far side are a mile clear of the remainder here symbolize is moving into third then glorious journey these are jump racing distances dream of dreams finally is going to get his group race and few will begrudge him sir michael stout Oshin murphy on him for the first time and i think everyone in the racing community will be thrilled for sir michael stout who must have had such a difficult time obviously thoughts uh, with uh, sir michael uh, and coral's family so after five wins and nine second place finishes and 26 lifetime starts dream of dreams is a seven length winner in his first group win clocking 124 35 for seven furlongs for sir michael a 10-time british champion trainer We've been at the track, covering top stories and exciting races in the sport of kings. Check us out again next week.